It's time to go to work. Jerk of all trades podcast episode number 33. What is up, guys? What is up? What is up? Uh, we have a big, big, big announcement today regarding the Jerk of All Trades podcast video corner. Got to stay tuned for that. Ray, what's going on, my man? Man, we've got a great show as always. We got lots and lots of fun topics. We've got Facebook asking you to send them nudes. Please, pretty please. <laughs> uh, inside of the uh, first robot sex brothels. Um, in a couple different countries, uh, Louis C.K., the serial masturbator, Alex Trebek going too far with pot brownies. That you just let that flow. So he, the serial <laughs> masturbator, <you>. <laughs> just for you, the yeah. serial masturbator. <laughs> oh, we're roaring already yeah. today. <laughs> uh, but we're gonna lead with an update on last week's big story. Uh, was Sophia the first robot citizen yes. beheaded by her? her own new home country, Saudi Arabia. Sophia! So yeah, so uh, I just came upon this um, just today before the, we were going to do the podcast, and it felt like we should probably talk about this. So um, there's a website. It's called Duffel Blog. It is the, Americans, uh, the American military's most trusted news source, they call themselves. Sweet. Um, and they, uh, they dropped a story. Um, got a picture of Sophia here. It says the number of robot citizens in Saudi Arabia was reduced back to zero today after Sophia Robot was beheaded in a public square. Uh, so blah, 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 whatever. Um, Sophia became the first robot citizen to be executed after a band of angry Saudi men dragged her into the streets earlier today for public execution, setting yet another milestone for progress in the country. Um, and then it goes on and on. Uh, that motherfucking ISIS. The whore of Babylon uh, is coming to get her. Strutting around without a male escort, without a <laughs> <laughs> fluttering her plastic eyelashes at married men. Yeah. Um, and it just keeps going on with this uh, really questionable racism. Um, the unnatural whore can't even be raped right, because apparently they said that they couldn't forcefully penetrate her mechanical orifices. No. Uh, one line that I did uh, I f- that I did find funny, though, was a survey shows 79% of Saudi Arabian men approve of the execution, along with 100% of American men named Elon Musk. Nah. Um, so anyway, yeah, I mean, pretty clear as day that, you know, that'd be fake news, mm. but yeah, Snopes had to, uh, duffel sn- blog. Yes. Yeah, sn- apparently the website just straight up lists, um, that it's a parody website. So, and, um, we are in no way, shape or form a real news outlet. Everything on this website is hysterical and the content of this site is a parody of a new news organization. No composition should be regarded as truthful and no reference of an individual company or military unit seeks to inflict blah, 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 whatever. So Sophia has her head intact. Uh, she Sophia is just fine. She's doing just all right. Uh, well, she might be even doing better than just all right. She might be doing great, actually. So um, she's planning to potentially eliminate humankind. And yeah, but she hasn't been she, beheaded. She can't feel emotion, though. So I don't know if she, she's just kind of like, you know, level, I guess. <laughs> yeah. I don't think she gets too high or too low. Uh, <laughs> some of us get too high, so it happens. Yeah, it happens. Sometimes you get low, too, so <laughs> it is what it is. Sometimes you feel like a nut, and sometimes, sometimes you, you don't. don't. Yeah. <laughs> this is true. Oh, cool. Man. So, yeah, right. we'll be seeing Sophia around. But, uh, Ray, do you know if Sophia has a Facebook profile or not? Uh, I don't know that. We could find that out, though. I'm actually interested to know if yeah, she does. Yeah, that'd so. be interesting if she did, right? Well, while you're searching for that, if she, if she does have nudes, and if they ever leak, I think we may know who the freaking culprit is, and that's that goddamn Facebook. Fucking Facebook. <laughs> All right, I'm, I'm searching for her now. Let's see. Okay. Sophia the robot. Oh, I misspelled that. Mm, you might not have. Google has a weird way of not acknowledging the proper spelling of Sophia. Uh, she has a, she has a couple pages here. 
Um, she's got a uh, fi- it says fictional character. She has over thirteen thousand likes to that page. Mm. No check mark um, second, or anything. Uh, no, no check mark. Let's go uh, under people. Well, we don't have a check mark either, though. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah, actually, oh, there is actually quite a few. There is uh, so Sophia Ro- Robot Linson. <laughs> <laughs> That seems pretty legit, right? Oh, of course. She has 132 friends, and she looks fucking horrifying. The only thing is her nudes are like an actual chick. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to bookmark this page, so <laughs> we'll come back to that. Uh, yeah. So anyway, um, yeah. To, on, on, to the, uh, on to the real meat and potatoes of yeah, why we're Yeah. Here. Apparently, like, you know, the whole culture of revenge porn, breaking up with somebody has become major, major issues for, I guess, male men and women. Across the mostly world. women, I think. Yeah, but. probably. Like, uh, especially if like you know, the chicks like, oh, I'm gonna leak your fucking dick pics. It's like, uh, yeah, <laughs> mm. <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> yeah, no, no one cares. Yeah. No one cares about that. Yeah. So like, uh, what Facebook is saying is this is a testing of a uh, preemptive fraud alert. Like, uh, Facebook is not storing the images; they're storing the link and using artificial intelligence and other photo matching technologies. So if somebody tried to upload that same image, which would have the same digital footprint or hash value, it will be prevented from being uploaded. That's kind of interesting that they're using the AI to, uh, you know, I, you know, I will prevent that. I will say that upon, you know, I initially read this article and then I saw a different article And in the second article, so in the first article, they say that no one is ever going to see the photo. Um, It's only going to be, you know, whatever, a computer-generated program that's going to determine the hash value or whatever of the photo. And then it's going to be um, deleted, and then no one can ever post a photo with that same hash value to Facebook, because apparently this is a big thing. Well, guess what? That's actually wrong. I so, bet it is. <laughs> uh, so hold on. Let me find. There is no way I'm giving Facebook any of my naked pictures. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah. Hold on. Like I said, I just don't care that much. Okay. Um, from there, and once the user has completed an online form through the website, this is being tested in Australia, a member of Facebook's community operations teams reviews the image and then hashes it or creates a numerical representation of the image that Facebook says cannot be read by humans. The company considered blurring images before they ended up in the hands of human reviewers, but decided against it because it may have resulted in accidentally hashing legitimate images. So Mm. to clarify, someone at Facebook is indeed going to be looking at your nude photos, but the company stresses those are specially trained representatives. Sure. Of course, yes. Sure. What about... Uh, see, they're like w- asexual people. Only this, asexual people are going to be on this uh, special Facebook task force to look gets, at your nude photos. It gets murky. So, like you know, obviously, people of all ages have Facebook, not just like young adults. So, you know, I'm not too worried about grandma and grandpa Facebook uh, having their nudes leaked. <laughs> but I don't are, think anybody really is. There, there are like, there's a site for that though. Teenage children and children that have Facebook. Like, are I mean, what's the deadline or what's the drop off? Like. Obviously, you should be like 18 years old and over. But like, what happens depending when, depending on what country you're in, what happens when Sally Joe May from wherever Texas uh, sends her 14 year old nude pics to Facebook and Facebook's like, oh shit, look at this. I got some 14 year old chicks fucking naked pictures on my server now. Uh, is that considered child porn or is it not? Like, that's just really even, odd. I hadn't even thought about that. You know what? Uh, interesting when you say. Um, I kind of mentioned there, but, you know, it depends on the country. So there was actually a story that I read uh, recently about a uh, member of a band, a uh, metal band that I'm not really a big fan of. But anyway, apparently, you know, with the big, uh, you know, the big rush now to, you know, let people know that celebrities sexually harassed you, um, there was this girl who apparently, I don't know how old she is now, 20 something, but apparently when she was 17, she was uh, talking with this guy. He was 32 and he had a girlfriend, whatever. Um, anyway, long story short, um, he supposedly convinced her to send nude photos. And so people in the comments chain, like, were like, so what? She's 17, blah, 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 blah. She's consent. And then like, someone was like, uh, this is, you know, the age of consent is 18 in the United States. And like, people were like, their mind was boggled. People from other countries that were commenting because in their countries, you know, 
14 was or 15 was or 16 was. So sure. um, depending on where you're at and what you know social environment you're in, obviously the age of consent is a little bit different. But anyway. Yeah. Well, I can only go by United States, obviously. Right. Right. But I mean, Facebook is worldwide. Absolutely. But what happens? What happens when they get child porn sent well, their the, way? Well, the photos get deleted. Not, it's not child porn. I don't see. I don't. I have no idea. <laughs> but it, that's considered child porn, right? Naked, underage, right? Yeah, kids or whatever. I mean, it's that same murky shit, you know, where you have, you know, eighteen year old that's dating a seventeen year old that gets, you know, nude sent to them, and then you know, yeah, it's, via text messages, right, even like fourteen porn. on fourteen year old action in the yeah. schools and shit. <laughs> 14, so, 14 on 14 well, year old I, I don't know how else to describe it <laughs> oh. but uh, 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 Facebook is claiming they get 51,300 potential cases of revenge porn every month or uh, one, uh, in a month alone I'm, I'm skeptical on this if I was you listening the listener here don't send anybody your naked pictures no and uh, you know Keep Facebook at a dis- at a distance. Yeah, <laughs> that's that's just my approach, but that's my approach to a lot. I of think stuff. that definitely we cannot trust Facebook, and I think to have to preventatively send those photos. I guess at this point, this is only being tested on you know on very particular people, so this is not like everyone is you know currently sending their nudes yeah. to Facebook. But it could eventually become that. I do appreciate that you know Facebook is trying to come up with a solution to help you know the revenge porn thing because that's definitely a huge huge thing Um, sure so it's more prevalent now than ever Um, right you know back in the day when you know you were (laughs) it was vhs tapes or it was you know fucking polaroids obviously you know people weren't going to the the local bulletin board and you know putting your nude photo polaroid up on it so yeah at least they're trying to find a solution but it's yeah it's weird, man. It's uh, it's definitely a questionable one. There's a lot of questions with this. Um, you know, what if what if you don't have copies of the photos that your ex has copies of? How do you send it to them? Yeah, how how do they get their hands hands on those? Yeah, yeah. I mean, obviously, it's only you know good for that one particular photo. So, I don't know. Anyway. Um, so yeah, if, uh, Sophia is ever looking to up and leave her newfound home in Saudi Arabia where she's not getting beheaded, I think we found a couple places she might be able to take up shop. First stop, Bordol, no pun intended, Germany. So let's talk. Bordol. Bordol. <laughs> boring doll. Not a boring doll. Bordol. Yeah. Germany. I don't know if that's the correct pronunciation, but yeah. the spelling of it is, is extremely, uh, it, funny. It, it looks like Bordol. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, the first sex doll brothel is live. Actually, they've been live for quite a while. <laughs> I think that there's actually, yeah, there is other bro- you know, other brothels, but this is the first one in Germany. Yeah, several already exist uh, in Japan, but Germany's claiming that uh, for $90 an hour, you can get your freak on with, uh, well, not Sophia, but uh, I'm yeah. sure they have so, dolls with yeah. different names. <laughs> and, they, and they have hair, too, so. Yes. Sophia does not have hair. No. That's okay. Um, <clears throat> the owner is claiming that they get a huge range of people from 18 to 80 year olds, from unemployed people to prominent judges. And about 70% of the customers who show up to Bordal turn into repeat customers. They're liking what they're getting. 70%. That is not a bad investment. Yeah. Uh, they say that they get a huge range of people. Uh, people. Proprietor Evelyn Schwartz. Uh, from 18 to 80 year olds, from unemployed people to prominent judges, she continues to guesstimate that about 70 percent of the customers uh, who show up at Bord- Bordal for the sheer novelty value of banging a silicone facsimile turn into repeat patrons. I think that's basically exactly what you just said. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> but slightly reworded. Yes, so, yeah. So yeah, this uh, this place looks pretty uh, pretty interesting. They yep. got another sex brothel out in Barcelona, Spain, too. Yeah, yeah. Let's uh, let's check that out. The owner, Sergi 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 yeah, Sergi <laughs> Sergi. I'm sorry, I'm butchering your name, but uh, you know, I'm not doing it on purpose. Uh, he admitted that he was forced to turn away some sick individuals who wanted to act out a rape fantasy, quote unquote. Oh man, I remember when we. We yeah, discussed more that. more of the rapey stuff. Uh, local residents kicked up a storm, and the facility faced a number of complaints. Cops then raided the premises, 
near the tourist hotspot of Las Ramblas, but they found the owner had closed the business already. You can still get your Lumi doll, though. Sessions are around $90 for 30 minutes or up to $210 for two hours. Sounds like an advertisement if you're yeah. out there in Barcelona, Spain. I mean, these you got your Lumi dolls bent over and ready, ready for all your loving. They can take it all. Yeah, these things actually, <laughs> uh, these these things look quite a bit uh, better than some of the other ones. <laughs> There's one in particular of what appears to be like the red light district where the doll is set up in front of a window with just her uh, her ass her, up in there. Yeah, her little stance there. Uh, yeah. But uh yeah, apparently you can still uh, go to this thing. It's uh, just a little bit more complicated to uh, to do that now. Um, yeah, it says uh, it's a little bit more secretive. Uh, customers pay online, and then they learn the whereabouts of the secret sex doll-filled brothel. So no one knows where this thing is, and then you have to pay for it, and then you get some secret directions so you can get there and you can you get gotta know a guy that knows a guy, yeah, get your, or have money. <laughs> yeah, a or lot just of have it. some money. So yeah. Have ninety dollars for thirty minutes. Yeah, I don't even think I'm paying ninety dollars for a regular chick, <laughs> much less yeah. a robot chick. But yeah, they know. have wow, they have fifty four girls that cater to every possible taste. Yeah, um, yeah. So robot, uh, robot sex brothels. It's are... kind of like an ice cream parlor. You get a little flavor of everything, you know. There you go. Fifty four different flavors. Fifty four flavors. Is that how many flavors uh, Baskin Robbins has? Oh, that's a good question. I, I, I bet can't, they have more than that, probably. I can't think of it off the top of my head, but yeah. uh, I bet it's a lot. So, yeah. you know, I, I'm just wondering how all these porn chicks got to be feeling about all these sex robots. Uh, they still got to get theirs, too, right? Even with the internet killing the industry, uh, porn has found a way to be relevant and expensive as fuck. <laughs> Uh, very, very fucking expensive. Super expensive. The future of porn could be kinkier, friendlier, and way more expensive than ever. Tell them about it, Ray. Oh, man. Yeah, so this is called bespoke porn. Yes. Um, it's where an individual can order up uh, any hyper-specific kink that they can imagine. So, um, yeah, it's uh, this chick, uh, Christina Carter here. Um, she, uh, she got asked to dress up in a Wonder Woman bikini, um, some, uh, Looney Tunes, uh, shit that she, uh, did some dude paid her $3,500 or sorry, $5,300, uh, for a 30 minute custom porno with, uh, with to her burn matches between her toes, have a rooster impression, a toy baseball bat in parentheses, not used for penetration. Oh my and then God. the aforementioned wonder woman costume <laughs> 5300 bucks man dude yeah the later in the article i saw that there are some chicks that could be making upwards of like six hundred thousand dollars a I, year doing I, this I was thing. talking shit about the sex robots i'm taking the sex robot over the 5300 hundred dollar wonder woman matches in between your toes with the rooster impression yeah that is definitely for 5300 bucks you better do like a thousand push-ups in 30 minutes or something i need <laughs> to see i want to see like a feat of astounding proportions and not just a feat no, with yeah. matches in between it that, that has nothing to do with your butthole or your fucking uh vagina hole or any other type of hole i want to be impressed i mean if it's an amazing for 5, feat, i want to see like a five and a half minute mile I want to see like a super like nasty 360 dunk. If you can dunk a basketball, that might be worth 5300 bucks. If they can do it with their vagina. That would be even more impressive. That would be great. But like, nah, <laughs> I mean, I'm not just giving it to you. I want them to fit an entire human being back into their uterus. To play dress up. $5,300. Oh, <laughs> I pay I pay that. That would be impressive. That would be very impressive. So, I mean, I'm not hating on them, even though I am hating on them. I, it's just not my style. I think it's just an industry that's kind of learning how to change. You know, they're they're they, adapting very nicely because yeah, they, they're making more money doing this than actually like, you know, before. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. This one girl talks about, um, you know, I remember my first month in the biz. I was hired to shoot a big feature on the set. We had craft services, wardrobe, hair, makeup, even manicurist. Six months ago, I got hired to do another feature for the same company, and I had to do my own makeup, and they fed us McDonald's at the end of the day. So there's no more money in mainstream porn, she wow. says. So, yeah, I mean, you've got Pornhub. You've got YouPorn. You've got all the other um, streaming X-Hamster. porn sites. X-Hamster. Yeah, big up X-Hamster. Sense8. Uh, yeah, nothing ever came with that. So Oh, really? A, no, uh, I don't think I damn. don't think so. I haven't heard anything about it. No. 
Um, but yeah, I mean, and this definitely, you know, this is a way for them to make money by, you know, tailoring themselves to the very, very, you know, hardcore pornography addict, right? You know, like the person that would, you know, I couldn't even imagine like, what would I, you know, if I, even if I had the money, like what, what would I make them do? Like, it would just be very bizarre. Yeah. Um, yeah. There's one. Oh my God. It says, uh, um, Dan and Re. Rian's, I guess is her name. Bread and yeah. butter is the messy, gooey, wet stuff they've filmed. Everything from baked beans and ranch sauce being poured over a model in a mini pool um, to a barefoot getting stuck in rat glue. Um, we've done <laughs> cookie cutter stuff, but honestly, custom videos are just way more fulfilling. We get to make people happy and make chicks put their feet in rat <laughs> rat glue. I don't even know what the fuck rat glue is. I guess it's the glue from rat traps. Is that probably yeah? that correct <laughs> that's super super sticky shit yeah so uh if you guys want to if you guys want to get into this it's i want custom clips.com it's an online marketplace uh to sell custom videos and for you to buy them so if you want to check out some height humiliation videos if you want to check out some vacuuming videos <laughs> uh, <laughs> this is for like the lonely <laughs> the lonely uh only child that has a bunch of money but has nothing to spend it on and like you know no girlfriend or social life yeah. so he interacts with these porn chicks uh, online which is nothing wrong with that but <laughs> not it's that just anything like wrong with that well it's just not my background or what i'm used to you yeah know? it's it's a bit bizarre i must it's, say yeah it's just it's just really weird like who would pay so much money for that it's, it astounds me. Yeah. It astounds me. But you know what? They're making they're no, making that chatter. Well, what so. I was going to say too is that if I was a chick and I was super hot, this is my steez right here. It's like all I got to do is put my foot in this rat trap for 5300 bucks. I mean, it's like I come feel, on, man. It's I, easy money. <laughs> I feel like this starts getting closer and closer to fear factor. Yeah. <laughs> Like all she's got to do is like eat a bunch of bugs and stuff. And that, like, that, that's like my, yeah, that's like my kind of, uh, oh my custom, God. uh, what is this called? Badonk? Badonk? Bespoke. Bespoke. This bespoke. Is, this is bespoke my type porn. of uh, bespoke porn. It's like yeah. fear factor. I want to see how far you can push. Yes. <laughs> can she put her whole face in rat glue? Yes. Like, who knows? Can she breathe or she, can she hold her breath underwater for two minutes? All right. Now this seems to, now this is getting into a snuff film and I don't know how I feel about that. <laughs> 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 like what if what if we pay her five hundred thousand dollars? Will she cut off one of her hands? I want my money's worth, goddammit. <laughs> I'm not paying the shit for, for a million dollars. Will she cut her nipple off? I, I don't want the red rooster uh Wonder Woman chick just prancing around. Dude, this might end up she got all my money. This might end up being like the uh the pain Olympics. Never seen it. Oh man, you're not going it. to either. Oh man. I heard that shit was fake anyway. Well, well, all right, that's fine. We'll put it on the video corner one of these weeks. No. <laughs> well, you can put it on. I'm not gonna watch yeah, it. Yeah, okay. <laughs> We'll see. Maybe when you don't know that that's what it is. I'll just turn it off like within two <laughs> seconds. Like, oh, the Pain Olympics shut off. Oh, yeah. All right. So it seems that porn can now be tailored to your specific needs. Well, Eddie would be happy to give you something else that you need. And that is J-O-A-T social media. Hit them with it. Yes, sir. Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. Follow us. Like us. Talk to us. Comment to us. We comment back. We reply to messages quickly. We're always on that uh, Facebook and uh, Twitter and stuff, Instagram. So uh, if you're interested in donating to the, uh, I can't talk now. <laughs> that snuff, Donate your money to us. That snuff film got me like my mind going in different places now. Uh, if you're Pain interested Olympics. in, yes, if you're interested in donating to the podcast, we're live on Patreon, patreon.com slash J-O-A-T podcast. Give us all of your money. <laughs> <laughs> right I, I love how before we're like ah, oh, we can't ask you for your money now it's like after, give us all your money after hearing about 5300 bucks for the uh wonder woman red rooster i have no problem taking anybody's money now yes please <laughs> i'm sorry man if you're giving that much for for a wonder woman red rooster if you send in 20 bucks eddie, you can, will, you eddie can, will put his uh foot in rat glue and we'll film it and yeah, put it on Instagram. all day all day every day like we're, we're gonna get like video cameras and mics and all that shit and we're gonna be rocking the shit with fucking yes <laughs> all that so uh yes the official website joatpodcast.com uh funny pics show notes and videos from our video corner uh well the video corner is going to be the video corner pretty soon 
Oh, that's a teaser. I think I might just gave it away. Oops. I think you did, actually. Ah! <laughs> if you stuck around and didn't skip social media, kudos to you. You got the teaser. Um, or the spoiler. Subscribe to us on iTunes, Stitcher, and Google Play, and pretty soon, Spotify. So you can no reason not to listen to us if you're subscribed. And uh, Twitch, twitch.tv slash J-O-A-T podcast. And then last but not least, hit us up, Jerk of All Trades podcast at gmail.com yes please please do so all right we're gonna go to break and then we're gonna come back with more fun topics so we'll see you guys on the flip side hey what's up guys ray the jerk from the jerk of all trades podcast with an offer just for you the listener of the jerk of all trades podcast audible is offering a free audiobook download with a free 30-day trial to give you an opportunity to check out their sensational service. I've got a recommendation for you once you get your trial all set up, and that is Robert Anton Wilson's Cosmic Trigger, Volume 1, The Final Secret of the Illuminati. Trust me when I say you'll be declaring yourself a pope in no time flat. To download your free audiobook today, go to audibletrial.com slash J-O-A-T podcast. Once again, that's audibletrial.com slash J-O-A-T podcast to get your free audiobook, courtesy of the jerks. Ellen, welcome to the program. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. Well, pleasure. I believe that is the issue here. Is that what your group is against? Of course not. We believe God put us on the earth to enjoy life and enjoy the world he created for us. But why form a group against something like this? Thank you for asking me that. I wouldn't be doing this if I didn't think it was very important. But there are some people who would say, come on, it's just masturbation. I don't think of it as just masturbation. Frankly, I think of it as a tragedy. A tragedy? You mean like a tsunami or Rwanda? Yes, I think it's that serious. Because those events, while, while certainly tragic, affected only one region of people in the world or another. Well, masturbation is a crime against, against God and against the person who does it to themselves. Young people all over the world are depriving themselves of the greatest gift that the Lord bestowed upon them at their birth. Their purity and grace in his eyes. Well, that's, that's very compelling. What do you think about that, Louis C.K.? Let's bring in our next guest, comedian Louis C.K., whom some might describe as an aficionado of mm. masturbation. Comedian man, slash masturbator. Who is well known for being a prolific masturbator, who even mm. brags about it. Is that fair to say, Louis? Yeah, that's fair. In fact, <laughs> you're the only person we could find who would come here to defend masturbation. Well, I like it. It's, uh, it's easy and it's fun and nobody gets hurt. Well, isn't that the point here, Ellen? With all due respect, uh, why do you care what a man does in the privacy of his own house? Or in his office. God cares. The Bible teaches us that lust in your heart is a sin when acted upon outside the context of marriage. Well, I'm not married, so anything I do is outside of that context. I'm not against having sex. I wonder why he's not married. I believe that the Lord put desire in your heart as a beacon for love. Well, it's the way that we can... Find someone and marry them and enjoy each other under his loving gaze. Wait, you mean that God watches married people have sex? God watches over everything. So we're like porn for God. He watches us and then he probably masturbates. Okay, that is way out of line, Mr. True. CK. This, this young lady. <laughs> That's what I was saying about the Amazon camera thing. You think he pays $5,300 for it? So this is probably so no. funny to you. Yeah, it's pretty funny. That's what's so sad. That you don't know the darkness that you live in. Oh, uh, no, I know the darkness. You don't have to live Yikes. this way. There is a life of joy and passion waiting for you. If you just stop hurting yourself. How can darkness. you tell people not to masturbate? I mean, nobody can not do it. That's a Since there's been people, all of them, every single person ever has masturbated. Napoleon masturbated. Gandhi, Joan Jett, uh, Shakespeare. Shakespeare, definitely. Joan it's like Jett Colin didn't masturbate. It's really, it's Joan of Arc, fair. maybe, but not Joan yeah, Jett. Joan Jett. I pay you. That you think that. But you can't not do it. Joan Jett was hot as fuck back in the day. Tried not Hell to yeah. masturbate? Yes. Well, sometimes I won't do it for like a week, but that's just so that when I do it again, it'll be way better. But what if you really stopped? What if you saved that urge inside of you and, and thought of it as something sacred? And until you meet the right person and you love them and then... You get married to them, 
And then you can give that to them as a gift that you've cherished and you've saved. That's beautiful. Have you ever been married? No. I was married for nine years, and believe me, God was not smiling. And now you're alone. And you masturbate, and you're alone. <laughs> you asked me, Louis, have you ever been married? Now I ask you, have you ever been happy? Are you happy now? What is this the beginning of uh, Shinsuke Nakamura's music? He's contemplating if he's ever been happy or not. Yeah, the fans are marking out the. So, Ellen, how does your group ruin get it the word out? out? Uh, are there rallies? Where is the picket line for this? Oh no, we have meetings. It's it's like a town hall. We bring people together and inspire them to walk a path of purity. Hmm. You're welcome to come. I'd be happy if you did. Sounds like a lot of bullshit. Mm. Okay, we're ready to wrap it up you here. You know what really pisses me off about people like you? You think you can tell other people like you got the keys to how to be happy. You know, you don't know me, okay? And you don't know God. God probably hates people like you to try to tell other people what to do. Wow. Masturbating's really important to you. Yeah, it is. It keeps me sane. I'm a good citizen. I'm a good father. I recycle and I masturbate. And I'm proud of it. And, and God's happy. Own that shit, Louis C.K. And later I'm going to masturbate and I'm going to think about you. Ooh. And there's nothing you can do about it. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> oh my goodness, Louis. Louis, 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 Louis. So I wasn't uh, privy to the actual video on that. Was that actually Louis C.K.? Yeah. Yeah, wow. that was actually Louis C.K. Interesting. Uh, so that was Louis C.K., and some random chick that I assume is an actress. It was on Fox News. There is a show called Red Eye, and it's kind of, um, it's you know, sort of, you know, it's basically like comedy. Um, I mean, it's sort of like fake news, you know. And sometimes people take it too seriously. So, I mean, it was pretty obvious when you listen to that that you know it was kind of a skit. But yeah, that was legitimately Louis C.K. Um, and this fake Christian lady telling him about masturbation. Um, and that was from quite a few years ago. Um, Louis C.K. has been talking about jerking off for a long, long time. And now it just came back to bite him. So let's talk about it. Louis C.K. Louis C.K., man. All that jerking off is finally coming back. Oh, man. Five yeah. women have reported that uh, they have been victimized by Mr. C.K. Uh, or I don't know if that's his real name, but... Uh... He invited two women to his hotel room to jerk it in front of them in 2002. They declined and thought he was joking at the time. He also was caught masturbating during a phone call with a female comedian in 2003. And last but not least, well, I don't know if this is the last, but this was the last in the article. Right, the last that got known. After a TV pilot in 2005, Mr. CK got shut down again after requesting to masturbate in front of another female. So, uh, yeah, I don't know, man. I guess art imitates life in this uh, case, and uh, I guess a lot of his stand-up comedy revolved around jerking off, I guess. I don't really know. Uh, it was, you know, it wasn't the main crux of it, but yeah, it was, you know, a big portion of it. It was, it was a, a thing that he went back to. Sure. And so now here we are in real life situation with him having to deal with these women, uh, basically putting them on blast. Yeah. It's just so weird that they don't do anything at the time. Cause the whole fear of like asking a woman to jerk off in front of her, I assume would be, she's going to be like, try to slap me or <laughs> yeah. maybe call the police or some goofy shit. I don't know. Or not goofy shit, but something at the moment that's going to have repercussions as opposed to 15 years later, like, Oh, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> well, here, here's the big thing. <clears throat> I mean, did you read the whole, did you read the whole article or, mm -hmm. okay. All right. So, um, like the two women that he uh, he jerked off in front of, um, I mean they like the next day made it known, and they were essentially squashed uh, by Louis C.K.'s manager Dave Becky, um, who is a huge huge uh, name in the comedy scene. Um, he's got Aziz Ansari um, and uh, uh, I forgot her name, uh, Amy Amy, Amy Poehler. Poehler. Um, so yeah, um, basically 
I, I think, you know, when you talk about... Man, that's you, a ride-or-die manager right there. Seriously. Holy shit. Yeah, he's doing all right for himself. Uh, but the big thing with this is, you know, where you talk about how, um, you know, if you did this in front of a woman, you would be slapped, whatever. I mean, and the big thing with this is he's in a position of power. You know, these, you know, in his, uh, we'll read his statement, um, but, you know, he said something about being uh, in a position of power and that they looked up to him. And that's true. I mean, yeah, he's one of the biggest, if not the biggest, you know, stand up comedians out there and has been for quite a quite a long time. I mean, I've been quite a big fan. I've actually seen Louis C.K. live before. Um, so um, and I watched pretty much every stand up he did. I thought he was a really, really funny guy. But there's no way but, you're letting him jerk off in front of you. No, I'm not letting him jerk off. <laughs> eh, yeah, you know what? If he wants, <laughs> like he wants to, I guess. But. What if like Raven or uh, like uh, <laughs> Alistair Black tried to uh, or made you an offer he couldn't refuse? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Okay, I'm just I'm making good. sure. Because <laughs> you were a really big Raven fan for a while. Yeah, but I didn't want him to jerk off in front of me. Okay, I, I don't know. Well, I appreciate. I appreciated his. You He's know... a power player in the industry. You know? <laughs> He's got his own podcast. <laughs> <laughs> it's not the same situation at all. <laughs> I'm just happy you said no. I'm yeah, just happy you why, said no. Why would I say yes? I don't know. Why would I say yes? I had to ask. And I mean, he just—it's kinda... like Louis C.K. I don't know if I can jerk off from these chicks until I ask. I gotta ask Ray. I don't know if he's gonna. And I think he just kind of—he just kind of just did it anyway. Like in some of the situations, you know. Like, I know that's like the worst just, part. Like the... he just continued to do it, like even though they weren't like you know. I mean, I guess they didn't walk away. They could have walked away. Sure. If there was any gentlemanly act about this is that he did ask. Yeah. But, you know, he didn't just like tie him to a chair and force him to watch it. I mean, I suppose that this is probably the least offensive of the sexual assault things that have come out, you know, because I mean, I guess. Oh, it, sure. I guess at least he was, you know, Isn't, only uh, Spielberg being outed now. And uh... what? Steven Spielberg and uh, Al Franken and uh, I didn't hear the Steven Spielberg one. I I, I may have heard it like as background I heard, noise. I heard the Al Franken one. But. Al Franken, um, and then the uh, Weinstein guy. Oh, and the uh, um, Harvey Wallbanger, John Travolta. Did you hear the John Ooh, Travolta I did one? Not hear John Travolta. Ah, oh, that hurts me, John yeah. Travolta. Um, Damn it. Yeah, apparently he uh, assaulted some. Uh, dude at a uh like health club or something like that supposedly mm. yeah maybe it wasn't steven spielberg like ten, i apologize like mr years, spielberg like 10 years ago uh yeah john travolta well you would think he could get yeah, whatever chick he wanted to back in the 70s yeah, i don't see anything, anything about steven spielberg it might have been a different guy i don't i don't remember yeah. what it was <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't steven spielberg though know? <laughs> But it could be. He touched E.T. inappropriately. Yeah. <laughs> and that was that video that we watched. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. That's too funny. So, uh, man, John Travolta. Huh? We'll have to Photoshop uh, Steven Spielberg. Maybe we shouldn't do that. I think he would sue the fuck out of us. Let's not, let's not yeah, do that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It may be funny in the in the short term, right, but it may but not in, be funny in, all. in the long term. <laughs> we may be watching Steven Spielberg jerk off in front of us on our corpses or something. Yeah. <laughs> we definitely consult Case Cruncher Alpha yeah. before we do that one. Yeah, let's not let's not fuck with him. So yeah, I mean, uh yeah, this uh the whole Louis C.K. thing, it's pretty disappointing. He had a statement. Uh I'll read the statement here. Um these stories are true. At the time, I said to myself that what I did was okay because I never showed a woman my dick without asking first, which is also true. Good job, Eddie. Commend you for that. Mm. Uh, what I later learned in life too late is that when you have power over another person, asking them to look at your dick isn't a question. It's a predicament for them. Uh, predicament is no pun intended. The power I had over these women is that they admired me and I wielded that power and my own penis irresponsibly. Uh, I have been remorseful of my actions, and I've tried to learn from them and run from them. Now I'm aware of the extent of the impact of my actions. I learned yesterday the extent to which I left these women who admired me feeling badly about themselves and cautious uh, around other men who would never have put them in that position. I also took advantage of the fact that I was widely admired in my and their community, which disabled them from sharing their story and brought hardship to them. When they tried because people who look up to me didn't want to hear it and they still don't want to. There's a lot of people still defending him pretty hard. <clears throat> I didn't think uh, that what I was doing when I was doing any of that, 
because of my position allowed me to not think about it. There's nothing about this that I uh, forgive myself for and I have to reconcile it with who I am, which is nothing compared to the task I left them with. I wish I had reacted to their admiration of me by being a good example to them as a man and giving them some guidance as a comedian and uh, not jerked off in front of them, including because I admired their work. Can I touch on that real quick? Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, go for it. Oh, all right. That would be quite disappointing, like to be a chick coming up in the in the comedy world, and your biggest or like you know your favorite comedian is Louis C.K. And then you finally get to meet him, and you've been like you know doing like uh, stand up for like six months or a year or I don't know, like early, early, early on. And the first thing he's he wants to do is just be like, "Hey, can I pull my pants down, jerk yeah. off?" Can it's I- like. <laughs> Can I it, touch my wiener? It's like you finally get to see Louis C.K. and you, all you want to do is say, "How how can I be a better comedian? How can I, you know, how can I advance my career?" And all he wants to do is jerk off. I mean, all you want to do is go up and shake his hand, but you can't because <laughs> he's got his dick in his hand. Oh my goodness! <laughs> you know, I mean, yeah, so was- you, so you shake his hand and his dick at the same time. And the last thing I want to do is shake <laughs> Louis C.K.'s hand, and he's got rat glue all over his hand. <laughs> Couldn't Louis C.K. I, did you come up with this idea earlier that he could have just uh, paid for those uh, bespoke porns? It could be, yeah. yeah. So his bespoke porn is actually that he creates it and then sends it to up and coming uh, female comedians, and then they and they're forced to watch it, but he pays them. Yeah, he pays them handsomely. There it is. <laughs> All right, back to the uh, <laughs> back to the. Uh, uh, Louis C.K. here, yeah. the admission. Uh, the hardest regret uh, to live with is what you've done to hurt someone else. I can hardly wrap my head around the scope of hurt I brought on them. I'd be remiss to exclude the hurt that I brought on people who I work with and have worked with, whose professional and personal lives have been impacted by all of this, including projects currently in production because they're all fucked now and they're all canceled. Uh, the cast and crew of Better Things, Baskets, The Cops, One Mississippi, and I love you, Daddy. Um, make sure to see all of those things. You know, kind of little advertisement in there, um, even though those things are being canceled. Uh, I deeply regret that this has brought negative attention to my manager, Dave Becky, who only tried to mediate a situation that I caused, and he's got a gun to my head right now. I've brought anguish and hardship to the people at FX who have given me so much of the orchard. Uh, who took a chance on my movie and every other entity that has bet on me through the years. I brought pain to my family, my friends, my children, and their mother. I have spent my long and lucky career talking and saying anything I want. I will now step back and take a long time to listen. Thank you for reading. There it is. Man. What do you, what do you think about that? That was a statement and a half. Uh, you know, he, he, he doesn't come across as evil. No, he did. He did the best that he could in that situation. I mean, compared to some of the other things that I've read about these, um, George Takai. Did you read about the George Takai thing? Oh, he's like the uh, anti-Trump guy or whatever. George Takai is like the uh, he's was on Star Trek back in the day. He's the Asian guy. Yeah, he's, uh, got a like huge social media following. Yeah, and so he actually had. He's con- involved with this now too. Yeah, he had condemned. I forget. I, he condemned uh, Harvey Weinstein, and then and then he got outed. <laughs> and then uh, I think it just belched into the mic. Wow. Uh, so then, um, and he's no, he's known as being uh, a homosexual. That's been known for a long time. So yeah. when you say outed, you know more. Um, well, being I mean, a sexual for, assaulter. Yeah, but. for the scandal. So, yeah, so basically uh, he actually condemned him on his social media, and then a week later uh, he came out, or a uh, story came out that apparently when he was like 42, um, he met some 22-year-old dude at a party, and I guess he, uh, you know, he fondled him and whatever he did. And George Takai basically was like, yeah, I don't remember that. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't. I I really racked my brain, and uh, I I can't seem to remember a Mister whatever this guy's name was. <laughs> yeah, and uh, so then it got even more uh, questionable when a clip from last month when he was on the Howard Stern show came out, <laughs> and uh, they asked him about if he had ever um, had he ever um, you know touched a a young boy or something like that, and his response was something to the effect of. Ooh, uh oh, or something like that. Like, oh, Jesus Christ. And then, uh, so that came out. And then his response to that was that he was just playing a character, which was the creep, the creepy gay grandpa. 
Hey, he's creepier than a <laughs> motherfucker. So, uh, um, yeah. This goes back to the age old phrase that I learned in Florida that uh, a wise old man told me. <laughs> Don't let people jerk off in front of you. Uh, be careful when you point fingers at somebody because those fingers can be pointed right back at you. Yes. Be careful when you he point your... He got your... outed, man. He's like, oh, I'm holier than thou. Right. Da, 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 da. And then all of a sudden, bam, upside your head. Exactly. Exactly. So, yeah. Anyway, I think that this statement is definitely um, one of the better ones, but, I mean, it doesn't negate what he's been doing. I think a big problem with this, too, is that, I mean, he had been doing this for a long time, and this had been something that had really, really, you know, it had been online, and people had talked about it. There was quite a few stories about it, and it was just kind of like you know, staying under the radar. Yeah. Um, I saw some footage of John Stewart being asked about it last year and he just fucking just pretended like he had absolutely no clue at all. Um, anything. He had never heard anything about Louis CK and anything like this. And what a beautiful man Louis CK was. And I find it hard to believe that a random guy on the internet had heard about it. And John Stewart, one of his good friends that he worked with multiple times, <laughs> probably heard about it as well he's probably worried about his own shit but at the same time yeah at the same time he's probably not gonna you know admit it or speak to it um actually aziz anzari was actually asked about the louis ck thing and he turned to the interviewer and said i'm not gonna talk about that well at least he said something he straight up just said i'm not gonna talk about it well it'd be like if one of my friends had that happen to them and it's unfortunate if it ever did. I wouldn't want to talk about it at all. You know. Yeah, a lot of people. Mark Marin had to, uh, talked about it on his podcast recently, and uh, yeah, it's a big thing too. <clears throat> should uh, you know? Should these people have to condemn you know their friend? Because I mean, I don't think that one action automatically makes someone a bad person. No, you know. Well, this is the beautiful thing about the internet. Like uh, these Hollywood goofballs that have been running shit for a really, 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 really long time uh aren't as bulletproof as they used to be right i'm not saying louis ck is one of those people or anybody we mentioned but you know where there's smoke there's fire and there's probably a lot of this going on that we haven't heard about and may never Corey hear about. feldman i'm waiting for you i'm yeah, waiting man. for you Corey I mean, feldman. the internet is exposing these hoes and uh i think it's it's for the best had you heard anything about the Corey feldman thing he got uh molested right so he had been talking for a while about, you know, this. Yeah, you know, like 10 years ago or right, something, the, like the, super long time ago. The molestation ring in Hollywood and stuff. And, uh, no, you know, nobody really listened to Corey Feldman because, you know, he's Corey Feldman. You know, he did some movies back in the 80s and then now he has a terrible band. But anyway, um, no one was really listening to him. And now that this stuff is coming out. Uh, but then he was real shady, too. Then his shit was uh, he uh, he will reveal, but only if he gets paid like three million dollars he will reveal the names yeah so he can you know protect his family or something so well, he might get sued or something oh yeah he might get sued uh he's not making movies anyway so he probably really needs the money yeah uh because he can't say like oh i won't have a career after this because right. i don't know when cory feldman <laughs> had a movie last <laughs> you yeah know? he's he's got a pretty successful uh movie or uh music career oh um, really yeah okay. i don't know how successful it is but he's in a band and you know, it seems to be. Well, he okay. must have some thick fucking. He's got heavy... that Michael Jackson money, man. Well, he might have have something dirty on somebody really important, like somebody really. Super Dude, he hung important. out with he hung out with my with Michael Jackson like on the reg when he was a kid. So I'm pretty sure he. Uh... But you think that's who he's talking about? Who he wants the three million dollars for? No, he's he's got a bunch of people. Uh, I believe he. Actually, oh, geez, it's more than one person. Yeah, he says it's a lot of people. Uh, oh my goodness! I actually, uh, yeah, he, he started naming names too. He'll be dead. He'll he'll they'll come for his ass. Oh my god! Okay, uh, there. I just looked up Corey Feldman. Apparently, there is uh, there's a new story that just dropped. Corey Feldman says that a demonic force motivated him to expose the alleged pedophiles in Hollywood. Hmm. A demonic force. Weird. Really, really weird. So is he backtracking? I, I don't. <laughs> Maybe that's who he was going to expose is Satan. Yeah. <laughs> I know. The black ghost. Oh, my God. Have you ever seen the black ghost, Ray? No. What's it's the black? Ba- it's bad news when you do. <laughs> oh, man. But, uh, yeah, I don't know, man. It's interesting. Like uh, like I said, these, these motherfuckers are getting exposed if we're doing this goofy-ass, dirty-ass shit. And uh, then, oh, you know what? 
Demi Moore. Did you hear about Demi Moore? No. The video with uh, Demi Moore. We might have to play that in the video corner tonight. Uh, spoiler alert. <laughs> mm. uh, but uh, she w- she has a video. I think it's Entertainment Tonight or Inside Edition where she's celebrating a co-star's birthday at a bar and she kisses him on the lips and is really, really buddy-buddy with him. And she was probably under the influence of some type of maybe pills, maybe al- or alcohol for sure. And, uh, you know, kisses this guy on the lips. Motherfucker's like 12 years old. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah. The co-star uh. is like 12 years old. Or maybe it was like his 13th birthday or something. Uh. And she was super chummy chummy. And, like, it was... It's not real hard to watch, but it's a little hard to watch. <laughs> you know what? The I, I think that that's, oh, that's a very, very interesting thing that that leads into um, that I find very, very bizarre. Um, and I can see where it comes from, though, is when you have, you know, older man, uh, younger girl. It's know. more stereotypical that right. way. Yeah, exactly. Um, and when you, you know, when it's the opposite, when you hear about like the teachers, for example, you know, yeah. like, oh, the teacher was like fucking like the 13 year old. Right. And she's like 38, you know? Yeah. Like people are like, she's oh hot. man, <laughs> I wish that was my teacher back in the day. Like, you know? Yeah. But it's also, she's still a child molester. So just sure. so you know, like if it was a fucking dude, like, well, if I'm in that kid's shoes and Demi Moore wants to kiss me on the lips, I'm not backing away. I know that. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, if it's under circumstances of like, you know, fucking child molestation, obviously it's a different story. Sure. But. Yeah. It was weird. It was weird. I'm wondering if that kid had like a dad in the industry that had more influence or something, because it appeared to me like she was on this kid because he, he was the key to like bettering herself, because I think it was when she was really, really early on in the game. But uh, that's just what I took away from it was like, man, I think she's trying to be cool with this kid because probably her father or mother or somebody in this little kid's family has a lot of influence yeah, and could make her career. And, you know, sure enough, years after that, she was one of the biggest stars right. in Hollywood. And so. all she had to do was fuck a 12-year-old. Allegedly. Allegedly. <laughs> Maybe. Allegedly by Eddie the Jerk alleges. That. <laughs> well, 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 we'll play the video. Okay. And then uh, you can see it for yourself, man. It's, Fair enough. It's Fair really enough. interesting. Yeah. So uh, you ready for some Alex Trebek, Ray? All right. Maybe the best story of the week? Here we go. Uh, that's what they say. And how bad an experience was it? I don't know if you've ever had a meal that made you hallucinate, Alex. <laughs> that was... <laughs> <laughs> talk about that. It wasn't a meal. It wasn't a meal. No, it never did. Never did. Interesting. It wasn't a meal. So yeah, that I mean that was apparently he told that story in 2015 and that appeared like that um came out after that. So uh but let's talk about the time that Alex Trebek uh ate like uh between 4 to 6 uh pot brownies. Alex Trebek is the fucking man. He is a gangster. Excuse me. He's lived a full life. They call him a stone cold legend of both game shows and silver foxiness. Hell yeah, man. He survived two heart attacks, a torn Achilles uh, from chasing down a hotel burglar. Look at that. Not even a robot hotel. And more than three decades worth of tedious stories from Jeopardy contestants. I can only imagine. I never, never was a big fan of Jeopardy. What about you? I suck at Jeopardy. Yeah. I, like I'm a average in average intelligence, maybe slightly above average. I absolutely suck at Jeopardy. Like it, it's really bad. I suck at Jeopardy. I am slightly below normal IQ, so um, yeah. You might be able to beat me though. <laughs> I was just So if you can beat me in Jeopardy, what does humor. that say about me? <laughs> that was just self-deprecating humor. I appreciate know, it. So. But uh well, uh, according to Trebek's story here, he had just arrived in California in the 1970s, probably for his career to get started off, and went to a friend's house for dinner, and there were brownies. He said, I love brownies, and I didn't realize they were hash brownies. Oh, boy. (laughs) And whoa. (laughs) (laughs) What he was unaware of after he inhaled a half dozen. No pun intended or probably intended. Half dozen hash brownies. That's impressive. That is super impressive. Uh, The dinner party was on a Friday. And I was not able to leave the house until Sunday afternoon. 
<laughs> I've, I've, I love it. <laughs> I've been there. Oh man. So um he says uh he spent the next day and a half in bed. It was not a good trip, and he does not or he he says, I have not done any of that stuff since. Except that he admitted that he smoked pot as a uh, cure for potential cure for arthritis in his shoulder and confessed that he yes. tried cocaine once, uh, but he didn't inhale. <laughs> yeah. um, I just made that up, but you know, <laughs> it's always with that, you know, like, Oh, I did, you know, I, I smoked pot once, but I didn't inhale and I didn't like it. Like, dude, you were fucking doing blow off of <laughs> fucking yeah. strippers, fucking clitoris last night. I don't like cocaine. I just like the way it smells. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. But uh, Alex Trebek, pretty smart guy, pretty successful. Smoking weed to uh, make the pain in his shoulder subside, arthritis in his shoulder. That's pretty, uh, you know, late breaking news, kind of. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> arthritis, the cure for arthritis is fucking medical marijuana now. Like, what the hell? Yeah. Uh, you know what? I have a. Uh, oh, you know, you know, uh, I also heard that about football players using uh, medical marijuanas with their injuries as well. Uh, you know, after uh, their football games and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Get you a good indica and you're you're good, man. Alex Trebek is the fucking man. Anytime he wants to be on the JOAT podcast. Shuck it, Trebek. Yes. <laughs> Just uh, kidding. Dude, those are the best SNL skits. I know, I know. The best. I did consider utilizing one of those as I love doing clip. that. Yeah, I love doing that for Jackbox. The uh <laughs> F you Trebek and stuff like that. <laughs> Whenever they yeah. give you something you can't draw, it's like screw you, Jackbox. Yeah. Son of a bitch. Yeah. I just watched that one, the Suck It Trebek one. Yes. Video Corner. Yeah. I also... Bookmark uh, it. I really... Uh, I loved, loved, loved um, Norm MacDonald on those as Burt Reynolds. Yes. Dude, those are the classics. Those the were classics. classics for Saturday Night Live. Yes, they were. Yes, they were. All right. So it's too bad that this next story didn't come to light earlier because uh, I'm sure Mr. Trebek could have used this on his little edible journey. So let's talk about Ooh. the Hot Digital Shaman, uh, the new app Wave Paths, which guides users through therapeutic trips. Is this live right now? <clears throat> no, it's not. Oh, yeah, that's right. It's going to be no. another year or so. Uh, I, I, read I, that. I, signed, I signed up for the email list. I checked out their website. <laughs> There's not much on there. but I was just about to check out the Play Store and uh, see if I can get my yeah. hands on this thing yet. Yeah, so it's very cool. Um, this is uh, this is being created by uh, Brian Eno, um, very famous musician, um, and they are utilizing immersive art, psychotherapeutic techniques, and intelligent technologies. Wave Pass provides new ways to become more intimate with ourselves and others, to listen to what our emotions are telling us, to explore what can be discovered in the depths of our own minds, and to drive meaningful changes in our personal lives. Um, so basically what this thing is, um, there, um, it's going to utilize generative music. And, um, so basically the music is going to be tailored to, you know, it's going to be infinite and it's going to create as you are utilizing the app and it can be tailored and changed as you're going along based on like, you know, what your interests are, like what type of trip you're trying to have. And if you need to change it on the fly uh, because it's affecting your trip, then you can change it on the fly as well. That is so cool. Um, so yeah, it's basically, it's going to be like an artificial intelligence software that, um, makes this generative music, uh, which Brian, Eno is one of the, um, innovators of, um, on the fly. And then people are going to be able to utilize that for, um, trips to, you know, hopefully, be able to get through some shit. I'll tell you what, um, <clears throat> my preferred, um, my preferred way to go now, if I'm on a trip is to do it in a dark room and to do it with my eyes closed and to go into my own head and, you know, try to, you know, work on stuff rather than just sitting around and, you know, watch a movie or whatever. So, um, this is cool too, though, cause you get, you get to listen to music still. Um, but it's hopefully going to help guide you and have a more positive, um, trip. So yeah, it reminds me of when we were in your bedroom one time watch watching a uh like uh the pattern movie. There's like a pattern movie we were watching along with a CD that I brought over. It was a DJ Shadow giving up the ghost, and the patterns moving on the TV was syncing up very nicely to the uh the beats on the CD. And yeah. we we didn't do that like it was not I planned at that. all. I remember that. Yeah, and it was super cool. So maybe the next step after this would be 
introducing some visuals with that, maybe, maybe. But uh, it's fine the way it is. Uh, they're saying that special versions customized to certain drugs, such as MDMA and psilocybin, will be available for clinical work using psychedelics. Uh, like for psilocybin, this is cool. Like listening to music while on mm-hmm. mushrooms, this is great. Um, the idea of using music as medicine is hardly new. Professional therapists already use music in scientifically tested formats to treat conditions like anxiety, anxiety depression, and autism. Nor is the concept of psychedelic therapy new. Psychiatrists widely deployed LSD in legit settings in the 1950s to patients ranging from institutionalized mental patients <laughs> to Hollywood stars. <laughs> We we'll probably need this shit more than anybody yeah, else I was right say, now. <laughs> there might be an overlap between those two things. So uh, even Cary Grant, who was coping with the trauma of being abandoned by his mother at age 11, called the experience an immeasurably beneficial cleansing. Cary fucking Grant, dude. Yeah, absolutely. He's an OG. So I've definitely utilized psychedelics to this means, and I'm sure I will do so in the future. And I definitely want to check out this app when it comes out. because um, I think it's really cool. Um, when you talked about excuse me when you talked about um the visuals and stuff i think that was one of the big things that they kind of wanted to make clear is that um you know this is not just like a you know a regular trippy kind of thing or not to be used everyday life yeah right like not just like look at these cool fractals or whatever you know look at this black light poster so it's you know utilizing psychedelics to you know transformative effects um you know transmutation so, um, and I think it's cool. They're going to be right now, you know, they're going to utilize it in, uh, you know, basically like blind trials and stuff, um, you know, but eventually this will hopefully be out there for everybody to be able to check out and it'll just be on the app store. I'm looking forward to it. Like when this thing drops, I want to get my hands on it. Yeah. Yeah. Just to listen to the music, even without tripping. Yeah. Know? So I actually, you know, I had heard of Brian, Eno, but I had never really listened to his stuff. So I actually, in the article, they had actually mentioned, uh, let me find the uh, particular portion that I'm looking for. Uh, da, 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 da. It's only a matter of time till we report on something like, you know, dummy driving his fucking car <laughs> while using the wave paths. Please app. <laughs> do not do that. Uh, crashes into, you know, the kindergarten school or something. Yeah. So, uh, um, I, Brian, Eno has a 1974 record called discreet music. And, uh, David Bowie talks about how, well, you know, he talked about, uh, once told me that he listened to nothing other than the 1975 album, sorry, 1975, discreet music during a three-month period when he was touring and struggling with drugs, says Eno, the music is so calm and slow that it induces a similar calmness in listeners. Um, incidentally, Bowie was in his 1978 recovery phase in Berlin. Eno co-wrote the track Heroes. Um, so yeah, uh, I actually put on that record and I was listening, I had meditated uh, a little bit before that. And then I put on that record and I just kind of laid there in the dark and just kind of let the music wash over me. And it was a pretty cool experience. So, nice. so I'm definitely looking forward to this thing. All right, guys. Well, we teased a big announcement earlier. And if you stayed for social media, you might've gotten spoiled a little bit, but uh, no video corner today on the podcast, but uh, be on the lookout for an all special video corner podcast it's all j-o-a-t all videos all day long it's gonna be super not gonna fun. be 24 hours long by the way or yeah <laughs> <laughs> not all day long unless not you listen to it on repeat long, yeah. <laughs> but uh make sure you check out these video corner uh special uh podcasts we're gonna have a lot of fun with them we're looking forward to uh exploring uh, the the videos of the interwebs and have you explore them with us. You know, it's, it's going to be a good time. The Video Corner has gotten very good reviews. So we're just going to double down on it and uh, see, just see uh, if we can have some fun with you guys. Watch some funny stuff and, and laugh. Watch some videos. And, you yeah. know, hopefully, you know, learn some stuff and it should be fun. Absolutely. So uh, uh, with that, all that said, let's check out twinstrangers.com or .net, I'm sorry, and see if we can find Ray the Jerk's doppelganger. Yeah. All right. So let's let's first watch the video that kind of explains this thing. All right. All right. So you got three, the... two, one. All right. Ooh. Pop music. All right. So users upload a photo and select facial traits. 
Uh, they have s people who have selected similarly using AI searching service. So guys, this is it. Makeup and hair. What do you think? Uh, the company has successfully prepared, matched lots of pairs. Here's some pairs that they have matched. Um, if you're oh, curious, wow. yeah, that is quite. That's pretty close. That was quite close. I'm That's say. better than seventy-five percent. Yeah, thousands of new users are registering every day. Uh, skeptical hippo. Yeah, <laughs> I, I sure hope well. so. <laughs> well, I just did. So yeah, just so you know, I thought this thing was free, and then it turned out that it wasn't free. And so, yeah, but it's for the podcast, so I'm fucking doing it. So tax write off. All right, so here we go. I'm gonna I'm jumping onto the website here, and I'm gonna log into this thing. Created my account already. All right, I'm gonna upload my photo. This here. is like a Tinder for uh, identical twins, kind of. <laughs> <laughs> Do you get to swipe right? I don't know. Uh, well, I don't know. You're gonna have to tell me. Yeah. Okay. All right. There's my picture that I'm using. Like, if you ever wanted to bang somebody that looked exactly like you, this is your chance. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. Let's 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 search it up. Here I go. It is currently processing. You got your phone? Uh, yeah. Cool. Um, okay. Um, wait. Um, I can play the video again. Oh my god. You found one? Uh well, I guess it gives you multiple. And uh -huh. so you have to choose? Uh wow. Wait, let me come over there. This is uh this is pretty bad. It looks like me. Yeah. <laughs> Just because he's bald with a beard, he's not even white. <laughs> oh god. Um, yeah, this is not even close. Thumbs down. Thumbs down. I I know you like it, Ray, but that might have been a slight ripoff. Oh, man. Let's, Thumbs uh, let's, way go, down. let's go to page two. Are we going to have to post some of these to Instagram to show how bad it is? Oh, man. <laughs> it looks nothing like you. <laughs> I oh, told you God. the beard would throw it off. This man. is Christopher Daniels here. I'm Hopefully sure. the iPhone X has better facial recognition than Twin Strangers does. Oh, my God. There is not a person <laughs> yet that looks like me. iPhone did this on purpose. <laughs> let's try a new search. Fuck it. I got nine. Apple, you sons of bitches. Oh God! Okay. Oof. All right. So I would probably give it a day, eh, maybe. I'm I don't think they're going to change that much because nobody's registering, and the people that do register are pissed off. Apparently, the people that register don't have big beards. So, all right, we're going to try this one more time. Different photo. Does it work? Here we go. Here we go. All right, best match, 85%. Ooh, you got one, huh? Uh, no, none of these people. Uh, I guess. Which one is the 85% one? Um, or are they all 85%? Uh, I could take this one a little bit. No, it, it like ranks them in order, I guess. Oh. Um. Yeah, here's a guy with a longer beard than I have, but nobody that really looks like me. That guy a little bit. Yeah, we'll uh, we'll post some of these. You know what's the other big thing that I noticed with this? What's up? Um, people don't know how to rotate their fucking photo. <laughs> so when you when you post your photo, <laughs> when you post your photo, you have to click this the little circle to rotate it, right? Yeah. Because it for some reason it rotate it puts it sideways. Like a vast majority of these pictures are turned the wrong way. Like it's really quite pathetic. All right, let's try one more, one more, last one. Oh, the search was different, huh? On the yeah. second one. Well, because I did, uh, I did a separate um, filter. And I did a separate uh, picture. Ah, okay, I got you. Okay, I'll do one more. Uh, da, 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 da. Wait. Uh, here we go. All right, try this photo. All right, open. Do, do, do. And I'm going to rotate the photo because that's what a good person does. A professional Like does. when you're filming, you turn the Dude, goddamn phone. You got to do your due diligence, you know? All right, here we you go. You got to do a job, do it all the way. 
It is processing. It's currently processing. All right, let's check it out. 83% does not look like me. It's a novel idea. I, I see where they're coming with this. But uh, you can have an 83% and they have a 75% with like actual twins on here. <laughs> this looks like a fairly fat version of me. <laughs> Wait, hold on. Let me see. <laughs> I'll accept that. That's the one that looks the most like oh, me. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's the best one. That's like by far the best one. I'm going to put it in the twins. I'm putting it in my twins section. Yeah, you got to save that one. I'll have to go through these later and see. There's like tons of results. So maybe there's some decent ones. Um, as you can see, that picture was not turned sideways. I literally look like every bald person ever. <laughs> I noticed. <laughs> it's the beard, man. Yeah. I'm telling you. You can't see the cheekbone and the jawbone and, yeah. and stuff like that. Yeah, this is actually, yeah, this is not very good. So, all right. Yeah, uh, Twin Strangers, um, not the biggest fan in the world. So, but it was what it was and it was what it was. So. All right, so uh, this is the point in the show where we would normally hit the universal callout, but unfortunately, the motherfucking Muppets have broken the universal callout, and Damn. there are no new Muppet stories to come out this week. Um, so with that, we have decided that the JOAT original, the universal callout, um, is going to be taking a sabbatical. Um, and so in my disappointment of that, I was quite saddened that there was not a Muppet story. Um, I decided to go on YouTube and I looked up the Muppets and I found that the Muppets chan uh, YouTube channel actually posts a new video every week, uh, what they call their thought of the week. I and was so happy. With this. Yes. Uh, <laughs> so with that, we're going to lay a universal call out to rest and we're going to play uh, the Muppet Thought of the Week from this week, and then we will play the Muppet Thought of the Week from before that that I really appreciated. Um, so, yeah, here we go. And now for another Muppet Thought of the Week. A friend is someone who picks you up when everyone else lets you down. Thanks, Janice. Join us again next week for another... Nice. All right. And then this was the other one that I quite appreciated. And this is with motherfucking Kermit the Frog. Kermit. And now for another Muppet Thought of the Week. Dreams are how we figure out where we want to go. Life is how we get there. I'm headed this way. Thanks, Kermit. <laughs> Can you play that again? Yes. <laughs> And now for another Muppet Thought of the Week. Dreams are how we figure out where we want to go. Life <laughs> is how we get there. I'm headed this way. Jerry Seinfeld is Kermit the Frog. <laughs> what is the deal with Kermit? Dreams are like where we want to go. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely got it's I definitely got it. a lot of the same pacing. Yes. What is the deal with Miss Piggy? She's such a fucking bitch. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, what so. is going on with all these guys putting their hands up my butt? <laughs> <laughs> what is the deal with all these guys jerking off on top of me? I can just move my mouth on my own. Yeah, definitely. I've, I've never seen Seinfeld, <laughs> so my impression is probably you've really never bad. you've never seen Seinfeld. What what is your what is your origin of Seinfeld then? Uh your, my your Seinfeld. So my <laughs> Kermit the Frog. My <laughs> now you find out the dirty truth that fucking Jerry Seinfeld doesn't sound anything like that. I've actually been doing a Kermit the Frog impression yes! this entire time. <laughs> <laughs> Oh boy. Oh boy. All right. We're going to have to have Eddie hear Jerry Seinfeld and compare it against my impression of Jerry Seinfeld. Yeah. Let's see. <laughs> like it doesn't sound anything similar. I don't get it. I don't get it. So uh, I will say that uh, the jerks here, we were quite inspired by the Muppet thought of the week. And so we're going to steal your motherfucking idea. Goddamn right. Muppets. So starting next week, we will end the show with wise words from the jerks. One from Eddie the Jerk, one from Ray the Jerk, and we're going to help you to lead a greater life, much like the Muppets do, unless they kill the Universal Callout. So I've already got a, a strategy for this. All right, good. I'm just gonna get them all from Inspiro. Yes. 
<laughs> oh, you nobody will ever know. <laughs> you can't do that. You can't do that. Oh, we're gonna have to edit that out. All right, so let's go to Inspire Robot. <laughs> let's go to fucking Inspire Robot. Oh, so, all here. right, I'll let you go first this week. Okay. All right. <laughs> all right. Here we Ingenious. go. Ingenious. Inspire Robot. I love you, Inspire Robot. Bank is just another word for fairy tale land. That's it. bank. Yeah. Huh. Eddie, what you got? Well, wish for success. And only then you will receive stormy weather. Is it storming outside right now? She, it's a chick wearing like a, a jacket. She, and you can't see her face. She's sitting down on top of a rock. And it's like she's on top of a mountain type of thing, looking over like other mountains and stuff. I, I just got a great one. It's a foggy forest. There's a bunch of trees and a murky background. And it says, you are about to to turn into a full grown cockmaster. <laughs> Dude, I think I just got a Louis CK one. <laughs> Was it that one? No. If you actually seek to try to change what you consider a great lover, try not to clap your hands. Ooh, there it is. There it is. The Louis CK <laughs> and Spyro bots. All right, so yeah, Inspiral Bat has spoken. We have spoken in yeah, another one that. of the books. We yeah. love you guys. Thanks for uh, sticking in. Make sure you don't sleep on the new Video Corner podcast coming out. Yes, yes. So, all right, uh, Joat is out. 